Hi everyone, welcome to this video where today we're talking about 3D figures. So the main part of this video is really to understand terminology and the properties and pieces of a 3D figure with just a little bit of area and volume mixed in. So first of all, the definition of a polyhedron. A polyhedron is a solid with all flat polygon surfaces that enclose a region of space. So a polyhedron is any kind of 3D figure where all of the sides are completely flat. So you have no curved edges. You can already probably start to think about some 3D figures that have curved edges or curved sides rather. Those would not be considered a polyhedron. This box here, it has all flat sides. This is a polyhedron. This is a rectangular prism. Whereas this cup, um, it's got a circular base and a cir circular top. You can imagine that this was covered. This cylinder would not be a polyhedron because the entire outside here, besides the bases, is a curved surface, which is not flat. The definition of a face is a flat polygon surface. So when I look at a rectangular prism, you'll notice that I have six faces. One, two, three, four, the back, five, six. Now, the difference between a face and a base, a base is a face that is uh, parallel to another face while other edge faces are on the edge. Now, a rectangular prism is kind of tricky because this top face and this bottom base are parallel, so these are bases. But technically, in a rectangular prism, there's three different sets of bases depending on how you're viewing it. So these are bases, top and bottom. Front and back, these are bases. And then even left and right, those are considered bases. Um, if you were looking at a triangular prism, the triangles would be the bases. And all of the faces would then be what um, the rectangles are going around connecting those two bases together. An edge, we should all know what an edge is. An edge is a line segment where faces intersect. So again, if I'm looking at this rectangular prism, where this face and this face meet, that is an edge. So if I was looking at a rectangular prism, the amount of edges I'd have are one, two, three, four. I have the same four on the bottom, so then that's eight. And then I've got the edges on the sides. One, two, three, four. So this figure, this rectangular prism, would have 12 edges. A vertex. A vertex is the point where three or more edges intersect. So in a 3D figure, everywhere you see a point where there's three lines that intersect or three edges that intersect, one, two, three, that is a vertex. So in this figure here, there's eight vertices. One, two, three, four, and then on the bottom, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I'm gonna show you six different figures and I'm gonna go through exactly what this would look like and also introduce some formulas. We're not gonna be using the formulas super deep right now into this lesson. We're definitely gonna be talking about 3D figures later in the year and this is when we're gonna need all of that. So first of all, we're looking at a cube and then a rectangular prism and we should notice that they're generally pretty similar. The only difference is a cube has all congruent um, side lengths whereas a rectangular prism doesn't have to be that way. A cube also has three different sets of bases. So if I was to answer, is this a polyhedron? A cube is definitely a polyhedron. And what about a rectangular prism? It definitely is. Bases. Now, technically a cube and a rectangular prism have that same concept where they have actually three sets of opposite sides that are parallel to each other. Um, so for example, I could say that um, quadrilateral B, C, G, F and A, D, H, E, that those are bases. So if I was someone to refer to the top and bottom, I can do that. Same thing here. I can refer to the top and bottom as my bases, but I can also say that A, B, F, E, and C, G, H, D, that those would also be bases. So you definitely have an, like some difference um, of answers that you can have. And also notice I did write that those are just one example. Now faces would be everything else. I would list everything else as my faces. Um, two of the faces are already listed as bases, and then the rest of the faces would be here. Now, notice how I'm listing the faces. Um, when I want to talk about the bottom portion of this, you know, it's A, D, H, E. Those are the four letters that I listed for this base. So then if I wanted to talk about the faces, A, B, F, E. So what we should see is A, B, F, E is like the left-hand side of the cube. And then E, F, G, H that looks like it's the back of the cube. 
D, C, G, H, that's the right-hand side of the cube, and then D, C, B, A, that looks like it's the front of the cube. Now, notice that when I'm listing the letters of the sides, you start at any point you want, it does not matter, but make sure all the letters are in that consecutive order around the face. You don't want to, you know, jump around and go diagonally. It's just got to be wherever you start, and then you just go around in that order. And so you'll see the same thing as with faces for my rectangular prism. Edges. Well, a cube and a rectangular prism are going to have the same amount of edges, like we calculated using this box. I actually listed all the edges here. And whenever you list edges, they are always lined segments. So you'll see I listed every single edge here. So BF, FG, GC, CB, you get the point. And you should see that there's 12 edges, the same way there is here in the rectangular prism, 12 edges. Vertices. So the vertices are each one of those points I showed you on this rectangular prism before. So if I wanted to list the vertices, it's literally just every um, point. So A through H. Now, what I didn't talk about yet are some of the formulas. So again, um, we should know that, you know, in a cube, S is the side. Volume of a cube you've done previously in middle school, um, it's side cubed. And then surface area. Surface area is simply taking one of the sides and multiplying it by six, since all the sides of a cube are identical. Um, kind of similar with rectangular prism, but instead of all the sides being congruent, you technically have a length, width, and height. Now, some of those might be identical to each other, but they're not always all going to be. This is my volume formula, length times width times height. And I'm just going to throw in the surface area here formula here, but we're not going to use it just yet. I'm going to avoid the formulas for these next few problems, but I just want to talk about whether it's a polyhedron, bases, faces, and vertices. So here this square pyramid. Is it a polyhedron? Yes, because all the sides are flat. But look at this right cone. Are all of the sides of a right cone flat? No, because the cone part the cur is a curved, a curved side. Okay, so now the base for a square pyramid is that square base, that bottom of the pyramid. Um, it is the basically the part of the pyramid where it's named, so square pyramid. You could have a triangular pyramid, you could have a rectangular pyramid, but it's named by the base of the edge of the faces, rather, that um, connect to make that vertex. So you're going to know that this triangle here on the side here is not going to be a base because, look, it's repeated three other times. All the sides are triangular, but the base itself is a square. Whereas for a cone... I would say that the base of this cone is circle B. Faces. All the faces of a square pyramid would be all of the triangles that meet at that vertex, that point, whereas my faces here for a right cone, I actually don't have any because I don't have any flat polygon sides. Edges. In this square pyramid, if I was talking about edges, I have four across the bottom of my base, and then I have four edges leading up the sides of the pyramid. So all together, I would have eight edges. So you can see I listed J, K, K, L, L, M, M, J. And then all of the sides going, all the edges going up to that main vertex. Whereas here for a right cone, think about it. If you had an ice cream cone and it looked like this, the actual part of the cone isn't going to have any edges. And the part around the edge of the cone is also not an edge. So there's actually no edges for a right cone. And by the way, a right cone means that the cone is perfectly, um, the vertex is perpendicular to the center of the base, the circle, that it's not kind of like a tilted cone. The last thing, vertices. So in this square pyramid, I have one, two, three, four, five vertices. It's the vertex at the very top, and then four along the bottom. And then for a cone, I have that vertex of just A. I'm not going to go through all of the surface area and volume formulas right now. Okay, right cylinder and sphere. So if I asked you, is this right cylinder a polyhedron? Does it have all flat sides? The answer is no, because this part of the cylinder is curved. Bases, the bases would be the two circles, circle M and circle N. Notice those bases are parallel to each other. We didn't have parallel bases in the cone and the pyramid, but that's okay. Those are just special cases. Faces, I don't have any faces because I don't have any polygon sides. Remember, a circle is not a polygon. 
edges. There's also no edges. You don't have any edges in a cylinder and the edge rim of the like, can, you could say, is not considered an edge because an edge would be a line segment. A sphere. So a sphere is like your basketball. Is it a polyhedron? No, absolutely not. It's just one big curved surface. There are no bases. There are, sorry, that's my dog. There are no faces. There are no edges at all. Vertices, none. A polyhedron for talking about a sphere, none. Bases, none. Faces, none. It has none of it. Um, vertices for this cylinder over here, also none because there's no points. I know I skipped over all the surface area and volume. That's coming much later in the year. I just wanted to talk about Cuban rectangular prism to get you started on it. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.